and welcome to Foreign Correspondent. I'm Peter George in the Middle East, where people are still reeling from the latest political earthquake. Just a few short weeks ago, the Palestinians chose the Arab world's first democratically elected Islamist government. It's called the Islamic Resistance Movement, Hamas, and its rise has appalled the Israelis, astonished the West, and surprised not a few Palestinians themselves. Gaza sets the scene. A narrow strip of land 45 kilometers long on the eastern shores of the Mediterranean. Behind the dunes, a million refugees. Three out of four of them live on less than three Australian dollars a day. Israel ended almost four decades of occupation last August but its presence is still felt, still resented by those who'd been on the front line of resistance. <laughs> From the frustration of dispossession and economic despair has risen a new leadership. Radical, untested, unpredictable, impenetrable, and Islamic. It's like a big uh, political tsunami hitting the whole area. And uh, in the same time, it, it tells me really that the Palestinian people are so politically aware and the day of judgment has come and they are taking this to the ballot box to judge their government. Jamila Shanti, teacher, conservative, religious, a Gazan refugee and a new face in politics, Hamas star. Uh, they said Hamas. <laughs> Dr. Shanti is one of the 74 candidates who swept to a democratic victory in January, to the shock of much of the West, who officially describe her and her organization as terrorists. Uh, she said that they are very excellent in mathematics. Yeah. But while the world holds its breath and wonders what it means to peace, Dr. Shanti tours Hamas-funded schools and speaks of her constituents' other priorities. The <laughs> So what about hopes for peace, an end to the violence, a halt to suicide bombings? Gaza is part of what was left of Palestine after Israel carved a nation out of it in a war against the Arabs in 1948. The other bit is the West Bank. Israel occupied both these areas in another war in 1967. Limited Palestinian self-rule came in a rare moment of hope in 1994. The promise of the Oslo peace accords a dozen years ago slipped through the fingers of both Israeli and Palestinian leaders, leaving very little goodwill or hope on either side. As for the Palestinian leadership, well, that was so hopelessly botched and utterly corrupted under the now-dead Yasser Arafat 
that hundreds of thousands turned to an Islamic movement that promised at the very least to make their daily lives better. Hamas is characterized today by militancy, suicide bombings, and a charter that calls for Israel's obliteration. But its roots lie in the Muslim Brotherhood that arrived in Gaza in the 1940s from Egypt. It was a social charity organization, but also uh, talking about good Islam. In the early 40s, uh, and during the time of the campaign uh, and the war between the Palestinians, the Arabs, and Israel, which was about to be established, the Brother Muslim group came from uh, Egypt, and many Palestinians joined them to fight as part of the guerrilla warfare against the Zionists. The Palestinians were defeated, but Gaza remained fertile soil for the Brotherhood as it set about building charities, schools, and clinics. They built Gaza's first university, a strictly Islamic one, 30 years ago. And the watchful, occupying Israelis encouraged them, hoping to split Islamic Palestinians from what they saw then as their most dangerous enemy, Yasser Arafat's secular PLO. The Israeli authorities at the time closed their eyes, to say the least, when it comes to it came to supporting Hamas or not, I don't know. But it's a great irony, isn't it, that uh, an organization that was supported once by the Israelis has now become <laughs> their worst nightmare. Yes, it, it is, it is uh, I think the Hamas rise to power is definitely a, a reaction to accumulating uh, events over the last 50 years. It is, I think the Hamas rise to power is a reaction to the Israeli occupation policies and to the Americans policies in the Middle East. The university is now Hamas's political powerhouse. 17,000 male and female students, strictly segregated on adjoining campuses, are being nurtured here. Uh, I think Hamas uh, have a good, uh, a good looking for the future uh, to change the situation to the better uh, in economy, and, uh, and the security policy. And policy uh, either. And uh, policy too. Uh, yes. Last year, Hamas took credit for making life so uncomfortable for the occupiers that they retreated, destroying their Jewish settlements as they left. 40 years of occupation left behind rubble, poverty, unemployment, and a brooding anger. Our policy is not to consider Israeli as our, uh, 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 our neighbor that should be cooperated with him because such big crimes cannot be forgotten in a short time. Mind you, Palestinians have been appallingly served by their own leaders too. A lot of fingers have been in the till, a lot of noses in the trough. The favored sons of Yasser Arafat's Fatah movement stand officially accused of ripping off at least a billion dollars in the 10 years they've been running things. You see, Hamas as a religious group should not score more than 12%. What happened is that Hamas was eroding from the authorities' popularity and Fatah popularity all the time, mainly because of the mismanagement of Fatah and the Palestinian Authority, the corruption, uh, and, and all the stories of the arrogance of power, which has come to uh, Fatah all the years, with the violation of basic human rights, with arresting people, torturing people, and then, of course, uh, the scandals, uh, one after the other. Then, of course, the dis disillusionment with peace process. In Gaza, then, it's hardly surprising that people have turned to Hamas, untested in government, but clean, moral, and clear in its resistance to Israel. 
Gaza, though, is a special case, conservative and sealed off for decades from the West Bank by an Israeli-imposed border. Raed's a taxi driver and a pretty typical Gazan. And why has it been so long? To understand the full force of the political tsunami that's washed over Palestine, you've got to get out of Gaza through an Israeli bunker, a walk very few Palestinians are ever allowed to make. From Gaza, the most direct route to the West Bank takes you through Jerusalem and on to Ramallah, sealed off by an Israeli wall built as part of its de facto international border. With more freedom to move and more contact with the outside world, the West Bankers were always much more attracted to Yasser Arafat's secular Fatah movement than to the Islamists. <coughs> now, in the wake of defeat, Fatah supporters, young and old, can only lick their wounds. With Hamas in power, do you think your way of life will change, your ability to live the sort of life you want to do, to be able to come to cafes, maybe to drink and so on? Will, will Hamas restrict that in the future, do you think? <laughs> On to the city of Nablus, a hot spot in an uprising against Israel that's taken more than 4,000 lives, three quarters of them Palestinian. In the city's Balata camp, live refugees like the Shaka brothers, waiting 40 years to go back to homes they lost in 67. Once a prominent Fatah family, their loyalties have been shattered. إنه ممكن يعطونا شيء يحققون شيء إنجازات ترجع لنا أراضي الاقتصاد عنا يزدهر أو ينمو أو يتغير الحياة المعيشية للناس لكن للأسف الشديد كل هذا الحكي ما تمش أي شيء هذا كسرت وجهه إحنا حكام إحنا عندهم نوع من الغرور كمان دلوقتي. Do you think that a Hamas government will deal better than Fatah with the economy, with corruption, and with the prospect of peace for Palestinians? أتيح لهم المجال يعني أمريكيا وإسرائيليا ممكن يعني حماس رؤيتها واضحة أكثر وفي عندها تشدد أكثر من فتح كله برجوع المستوطنات زادت البطالة زادت الناس جاعت الفساد استشرع لنا بزيادة 
يعني في ناس كانوا بيمتلكوش شيء في ظل الفترة هاي الماضية أصبحوا من أصحاب الملايين. We like our prophet more than our sins. Yes. Uh, this is in our religion. Yeah. Ten years of Fatah's failures have destroyed the faith of men like Omar and his brother. Yes, yes. Secular or observant, they've turned to an Islamic movement because it offers hope amidst despair, honesty amidst corruption, purpose amidst uncertainty. Anyone know God, believe in God, I don't think that he can do anything wrong. Because he always uh, being afraid that uh, his God watching him and he will punish him if he do anything wrong. Do you think that Fatah forgot this? Uh, I think most of them for, uh, forgot this thing. <laughs> The US and Israel didn't see the political tsunami coming, but one person who did was Nick Pelham. Bethlehem has been organically linked to Jerusalem for thousands of years, at least 2,000 years, and that separation is now total. A researcher in Jerusalem for a respected global think tank, Nick regularly takes the public bus to the Christian Palestinian city of Bethlehem through yet another one of Israel's concrete barriers. The city is effectively stifled, and that is uh, having a huge impact on what has essentially has been a pilgrimage site for, for 2,000 years. Uh, the lifeblood of, the, of the, the city is being is, is being stopped. In the past 12 months, as Hamas has won municipal elections in city after city, even in Christian Bethlehem. Nick's witnessed how these representatives of a movement publicly espousing the destruction of Israel are, in fact, far more pragmatic than they may seem. You can't be a Palestinian without dealing with the Israelis at, at every level of your existence, to, for travel, for permits, for uh, supply of electricity, that it recognizes that this is a reality that it can't change. What you're seeing essentially is a game of poker in which there is going to be mutual recognition at some point in the future of a Palestinian state and an Israeli state. And it's at what point you put your cards on the table. Hamas has said that they're not ready to put their cards on the table until such a time as Israel is ready to do so, until it ends the occupation and until there is a uh, just and, and legitimate resolution of the refugee issue. Unlike Fatah, Hamas is known to be a disciplined force. It won't escape blame for any violent outbreaks on the streets here or in Israel. A year ago, Hamas called a temporary halt to its campaign of suicide bombings against Israel, and that's still holding. For their part, Israeli leaders who face their own election in a week's time continue to talk tough about terrorist Hamas, of course. More reflective players, including a former security advisor to Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, see grounds for optimism. Look, in the Middle East, you don't trust definitely not your adversaries, if not uh, use the term enemies. However, these gentlemen are serious people, and if they behave as pragmatic, as seriously as they are, then we can have a common ground with them, with dignity for each other. I think we have to focus on what they are doing, not what they are saying. The whole world, I think, is holding its breath and asking the question, will there be peace with Israel? Will Hamas deal with Israel? What is your answer to that? The question should be for the Israel. Is Israel is ready to, to recognize the right of the Palestinian people. What is the border of Israel to speak about? What about the aggression of the Israeli? What about the occupation? What about the detainees? What about the threatening our economy and the closure of our borders, even after their withdrawal from Gaza? So these questions should be answered first. Was it a mistake, and has it undermined your moral standing to launch suicide attacks against Israelis? It's not a, it is not a suicide attack. If, the, if you are ready to give us F-16 and uh, are ready to give us M-16 and to give us 
tanks, we are going to use it army against army. But to attack and blow up a bus full of civilians okay. surely strips you of any moral righteousness that you might claim? This is, this is one point, this is one eye. This is the only eye, one eyed European and Western people who are not looking to the other by the other eye. More than one third of the Palestinian people killed by the Israeli are, 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 are children, are women. Hamas says it plans to roll its militia into the mainstream Palestinian security forces, perhaps embarking on a journey that takes it from global pariah to international recognition as a legitimate voice of Palestine. It'd take time, but there's a precedent. Men condemned as terrorists 60 years ago emerged from the Jewish underground to become acknowledged Israeli leaders. Is it your belief that Israel will actually come to deal with Hamas sometime in the not too distant future? I believe that the majority of the Israelis are willing to have peace and security with Hamas in power or without Hamas in power. And I believe that once they get out of, they get rid of their fear and insecurity and even paranoia, they will come out of their shells and stretch their hands to whoever is there in Palestine, including Hamas. When Jamila Shanti and her Hamas colleagues were sworn in as MPs in Gaza, they used a video link to the parliament in the West Bank because the Israelis wouldn't let them go there. Hanging over them was a threat by Israel and the US to starve their new government of funds. Then last week came their first test of political maturity. Israel demolished a Palestinian jail and seized militant inmates. Palestinians responded with outrage. Hamas will be judged on whether it keeps a lid on violent reprisals and how it manages the competing demands of international credibility and Palestinian militancy. Ordinary Palestinians don't want to see the blood flow anymore either. What they'd like is recognition of nationhood a better way of life and a bit of peace. Any attempt to destroy the leaders they've chosen to achieve that will make them more angry, more militant. And that's not in anyone's interests.